Theme Parkology presents Treasured Moments with Susan Egan. Original interview completed by Jerry Cornell and Joshua Schaefer. Edited by Jerry Cornell. I was doing Beauty and the Beast on Broadway, and so once I was cast as Meg, everyone said, well, of course she was cast. But the truth is uh, they wouldn't let me audition because Belle is Belle and Meg is not. So they didn't think I was right for it. What was working to my advantage was that they had done several movies the several years prior to this where they had different actresses as the speaking voice and the singing voice, and they were very interested in coming back to finding one voice like Jodie Benson, you know, who sang and spoke the role, like, like Paige O'Hare, of course, in Beauty and the Beast. And so because of that, they came to poach from Broadway, and everybody was at the audition. Audra McDonald and, and Donna Murphy and just amazing people. And they wouldn't let me audition because they didn't think I was right for it. And I just begged and begged and begged. And because they had to look at me every night and be nice to me, they let me audition. <laughs> and they figured, oh, she'll waste five minutes, but then she'll be happy and we can move on with Beauty and the Beast. Here's what they didn't know. So the role of Meg was, the description was Barbara Stanwyck from The Lady Eve. And what they didn't know is that I had another amazing female mentor in Beauty and the Beast who was my dresser. And she would, you know, I, I was going home to an empty apartment every night after that show, but I, you're sort of buzzed after a show. You know, I wouldn't go to sleep till 2, 3 in the morning. So she would bring a different, this is how long ago, videotape of a classic movie, you know, uh, whether it was, whatever, uh, Casablanca or, you know, anything with Betty Davis or Joan Crawford or what, whatever. And I would watch it that night. And then she and I would discuss it the next day when, I, when we were getting ready for the show. So I had seen all of them. I understood what Barbara Stanwyck and the Lady Eve was. I understood that women of that era in Hollywood spoke with a cadence. You know, if you need me, just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you? You pucker up your lips and below. You know, it's the whole thing. And the script was so well written that I'm sitting in the waiting room and I'm looking at the sides and it's the scene where Meg meets Herc and he says, you know, are you right, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Megra? My friends call me Meg. At least they would if I had any friends. So they give you a name along with all those rippling pectorals. You know, I mean, it's, I was just doing my impersonation of a 1930s Warner Brothers MGM actress. And I don't think other people were. I think other people were saying Megra. Well, my friends call me Meg. They would if I had any friends. I mean, it, and so when I went in with that wacky little cadence, I can't take credit for it. The script was well written, do you know, but it was also funny. But also, you walk in and they say hi, and they're recording your audition, of course. But they don't look at you when you speak. They're actually looking down at the table, and they actually cover their eyes from seeing you because they're looking at a picture of the character to see if this voice, you know, there might be a voice they like very much, but then you look at a picture of Meg and it doesn't make sense coming out of that mouth. So anyway, so they're looking at Meg while you speak. But one by one, their little heads popped up and looking at me. And I was sort of able to say, hi, <laughs> hi, when I'm playing Belle, I'm acting. Meg is kind of right where I live. Like she's sarcastic, her voice sits lower, and that's where I actually speak. And so they thought that was pretty funny. And there's no callbacks. They just take the tape. The recording is the callback. And so they whittle it down to about three voices. And then they test to animate to those voices. This is about a nine-month process. So, you know, the audition was gone, and I really didn't hear anything about it. But every once in a while, Michael Cosrin, the musical director of both projects, would say, hey, you're still in the running. You made the next cut. Oh, I'm like, oh, that's so great. You made the next cut. Okay, so flash forward, we're done with the first year of Beauty and the Beast in New York, and we're now out in Los Angeles. Uh, eight of us, eight of the originals, went to the L.A. company to open the show there. And Michael Eisner's walking down the hall, and he's like, hey, hey, good audition for Hercules. This is like eight months later. I'm like, oh, I'm still in the running. Like, Eisner's heard it now. Yay, <laughs> you know? And about a month later, I got the job, and I started recording during the day when I was doing Beauty and the Beast at night. And it was, you know, it was amazing to go and see storyboards there's no animation yet of course you know, meg says it's been a real slice and she like does this little cutting move with her hand and i go oh my gosh that's so funny because 
I did that. And Alice Dewey says, at the audition, we know. That's, that's yes. <laughs> right. So I'm like, oh, oh, okay. That's how this thing works. Yeah. And they, I don't look like Meg, but they would, you know, how she juts her head out or raises an eyebrow. Like, that's, that's, that, that's so weird. You know, that's, that's what I was doing. She's like, uh-huh, yeah, right. Do you get it yet? I'm like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> And it takes a couple years, and, and each time you show up, they've done more artwork until finally you're seeing animation, sketch animation, and then every hundred pictures or so, it, it's just a flash of, of the whole color palette, and then it goes back to black and white, and, you know, it was neat to see, and, and eventually getting to record with, with Tate and Jim Woods, and of course, um, all the muses, and the recording session with Alan and David Zippel was awesome it was amazing it was that word is overused but it actually was I remember Tate was sitting right behind me we were at the screening and I I just were giggling and my friends who came were giggling because they said you are we recognize you more in Hercules than we do in any of the stage plays you've done in these ingenue roles which are so decidedly not who you are as a person but you seem to play those roles okay, but Meg, they're just laughing. They're like, oh, my God, that's you. That's Susan. It's like, you know, as, as my children will tell you, you know, sarcasm was one of the first things they were taught by me. It took them a while. They don't really get it till they're four or five. And then Nina finally goes, oh, oh, you're being sarcastic. Yes, Nina, I'm being sarcastic. 